könnten in diesem Augenblick hier hereinsehen, euch, meine deutschen Kameraden, ansehen, sie würden in this video, I'm going to show you how to get to the Wolf's Lair as a backpacker on a tight budget and also add some little history facts in as well. I'll show you how to get there, the best place to stay, ticket prices and the best times to visit. The Wolf's Lair was Hitler's headquarters and had about 80 buildings, with 50 of them being bunkers which were mostly all destroyed at the end of World War II by the Soviet Union. Now, I'll show you my journey to the Wolf's Lair after a first failed attempt to visit because of the bad weather, I tried again the next day. Luckily, the weather had cleared up and it was sunny again. As a tip to save money on hotels, you can stay at a little village called Srokovo nearby, which is about a 50 minute bus journey from the Wolf's Lair. This hotel cost me only £15 a night. I'll do a more detailed video about this adorable little village later. Keep in mind that the bus journey is about £4 one way from Srokovo to the Wolf's Lair, which is quite expensive and your connecting bus might not arrive, as I learned the hard way. I finally arrived at the Wolf's Lair after two hours of delay. A ticket costs about 25 sloty, which is £5. When you arrive, you can hire an audio guide for only £2, which is very cheap. You can also book a private guide for about £30, but as I am a backpacker, the £2 option was a bargain and extremely good. So this is where Hitler planned his operations. This is his old headquarter, uh, which is insane. The bunkers and buildings were mostly constructed between 1940 and 1942. Hitler arrived at the Wolf's Lair on June 24, 1941. He was only planning to stay a few days, but throughout the war he spent a total of over 800 days here. Walking through here felt like I was doing something important. I was experiencing something evil, but also interesting. Stepping into these derelict buildings, I could really feel the strange energy from these bunkers and from these walls. I could almost feel the presence of evil doing and military planning. It sometimes felt like Hitler would come around the corner and tap me on my shoulder. I could almost hear the footsteps of generals. I was living in their shoes for 80 years on as a civilian. It's a stark reminder that we all need to stand together against racism and prejudice to stop this from happening again. So this building is where the stenographers would have worked. They would have done their typing, um, for the speeches and after meetings. And yet, the water dripping from the ceiling almost sounds like a typewriter, which I find really interesting. Um, and you can see all the kind of the spikes coming out the ceiling from the, from the water, the calcium. But yeah, it feels very strange to be here. It's quite moving, in a way. I don't know why. Exploring the site was absolutely vast. It was so big and there was so much to see. So behind me is Hitler's bunker, where he slept, did all of his normal day-to-day -day things, his meetings. And he also had a dog called Blondie, which I find very strange that had so much love for a dog but hated so many people. It's almost like figuring out how how these people's brains work is really bizarre. He treated his dog so well, it slept in bed with him, but he killed millions of people. It's, it's a bizarre concept, really. I'm inside Hitler's bunker where he planned a lot of evil doings and it's super strange. I can almost imagine him giving orders and doing his normal life things in here. It feels really weird to be in his bunker. It's a very, very strange experience.
many of the generals, including Himmler, really didn't like the wolf's lair because there was loads of mosquitoes and sandflies, and there still are lots of mosquitoes and sandflies. So yeah, it's, it's interesting that they didn't even like living here. So right here is where Hitler's attempted assassination happened. It's pretty crazy to stand here to think they had this meeting here and this is where it all happened. Yeah, it's amazing to be able to see this. This was Hitler's main communication bunker. When he would make a call, his calls would be distorted in some sort of coding sequence. Absolutely crazy. Such an amazing tour. Honestly, I can't say it enough. Also, look, if you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. That would be amazing. The wasp is chasing me. I'm a bit of a, I'm a, bit of a scaredy cat when it comes to wasps. I would recommend getting here in the morning like I did. Um, there was no crowds when I got here. Obviously, I was here a bit longer than a normal person, but if you get here at eight or nine, you'll get the whole place to yourself. There was no one here, which was really, really nice. But yeah, gonna grab some food now. Eagles cross here. 24 slot. Cards or only cash? Euro, only cash. Dollar, but cash, euro. I have, I have Zloty. So, Bigos is a Polish stew with like different kind of meats, sauerkraut, vegetables, bread. It looks very homey, so I'm looking forward to eating it. I think this one's got like a bit of sausage, a bit of onion, a bit of like chicken maybe somewhere in there. Nice, nice bigos. Another thing about travelling to the Wolf's Lair is that the buses finish very early in the day. So make sure to plan your journey or you will have to hitchhike back to your hotel, which I have to admit I did enjoy. What? did I learn? I learned that history was something we should never forget and that learning and educating ourselves is a way of making the world a better and safer place. Let's all stand together against any form of discrimination. Let's stand together as one, as human beings. We are one, we are human, we are born from the same blood. We are one, we are human, we are born from the same blood.